Hey, I'm Jonathan and I'm a facilitator. I also run a community of facilitators and sometimes they ask me questions like this. What is the job title I should be looking for when I'm looking for facilitation jobs? They use the terminology workshopper here because our program is called Workshopper Master. Workshopper is just someone who can also design workshops and run workshops and facilitate. But let me look into this question. So facilitation is one of those weird jobs where there are a lot of different types of names for the role. And sometimes if you're not really attuned to it and you're not really attuned to looking for that kind of work, you might not even know what to search for. So in this video today, I'm gonna to show you exactly the types of roles that companies are looking for when they're looking for facilitators. By the way, we have nothing to do with these companies. I'm just like showing you the jobs that are up here. So here are a couple of examples from LinkedIn and around the web of companies looking for facilitators. Let's just jump in. The first job is an innovation hubs facilitator at Vodafone. Vodafone. Let's look at the first thing they're looking for when they're looking for a facilitator at Vodafone. And it should be something familiar if you've been following the workshopper thing for a while, organizing, planning, and leading engaging customer workshops. That's the main point of this job. You're going to be running workshops, you're going to be planning workshops, you're going to be designing workshops, and you're also going to be the lead facilitator for these workshops. Down here, you can see the types of people we're looking for, the ability to operate in a fast-paced environment. You're going to see these things are pretty similar between companies, but this is a straight up facilitation job working at one of the innovation hubs at Vodafone. Let's move on and have a look at some of the other job titles you might be looking for. Uh, when you're looking for facilitation. Here we have a business design and strategy facilitator. So this is something a little bit more in the vertical of design and strategy. This is at a company called Vectorcom. <laughs> it's actually not Vectorcom, it's Vectorform. I said it with so much conviction, but also wrong. This job starts with a really nice description of what you're gonna be doing, which I would consider one of the keys of being a facilitator. Do you love helping teams unlock new potential? What you're doing often as a facilitator is you're bringing a team together and you're helping them unlock what they already have inside them by removing a lot of the noise and messiness of meetings. So this is a perfect way to start a job description. Do you relish blending creativity and discipline? Can you lead the room's energy? This is a perfect classic facilitation role. I'm even sure I don't want to speak for Vectorcom, but I'm even sure if you are a general facilitator and willing to learn how to run a strategy sprint, how to run business model canvas, those things don't take that long to learn. I'm pretty sure you could go here and still be the business design and strategy facilitator, even if you didn't have those skills before, besides the facilitation foundational skills. So let's have a look at another one. We have lead workshop and lab moderator at Deloitte. Many of you will already know Deloitte. This is in German, um, so I'm not gonna deeply read through it, but they're looking for someone to design workshops and run workshops at their innovation lab at, at Deloitte. And this is again, a classic facilitation role, but in the innovation space. So they're calling it lead workshop and lab moderator slash facilitator. Again, it's a mix of sometimes, sometimes it's like we're looking for someone who can do workshops. Sometimes it's, some, it's a moderator, sometimes it's a facilitator. It's just good to see the mix of things you should be searching for and setting alerts for on LinkedIn. And again, like if you're applying for jobs and you don't have some of these things, doesn't actually matter. The, like the people writing these job ads often don't really know deeply what they're looking for. So even if you don't have some of these things, it's okay. Let's take a look at what Deloitte is actually looking for here because I find it kind of interesting. So what they're looking for here is the first bullet point is that they're looking for someone who has completed university and completed something like communications or psychology or something similar. Like I didn't do any of those things. I did something called media production. I would still be fine. They're also looking for people who understand uh, creativity and innovation techniques. For example, design thinking, which you're gonna see all the time. Design sprints is another one. They would also like to have people uh, who know agile service design, uh, organization and leadership. But basically those are some of the things you're gonna see commonly coming up that you know how to run workshops and you know how to run brainstorming sessions and strategy sessions and a nice mix of these types of things. By the way, if you have any questions while you're watching this around facilitation, just hit pause, ask us in the comments, we answer everything and we often make videos based on those comments down below. All right, let's go back. The next thing, design thinking practitioner, facilitator number 1871073. That's a really great name for a job. A design thinking practitioner is kind of another way of saying we want a creative facilitator who happens to know about design thinking as a way of running workshops. So if you see something like this, this is for Credit Suisse, 
If you see something like this and you're like, oh, but it's just design thinking, but I want to do more, that doesn't matter. You can do more. Design thinking is such a broad term for creative problem solving. You know, you can put that in as a notification when design thinking practitioner or when design thinking facilitator comes up. You can be sure that you can also look at that as sort of a general facilitation role as well. So let's look at what Dell is looking for, facilitator and trainer for leadership development. I like these types of jobs because what you're being asked to do here is you're being asked to facilitate groups to solve problems and make decisions and, and do all that good stuff. But they're also looking for you to also teach and, and train teams on a lot of these methods and on leadership topics. I, I really like that because I love running leadership retreats. I really don't want to go into too much detail here, but just to show you the things you'll be doing in this role. You'll deliver highly interactive and engaging and meaningful sessions while maintaining a high level of energy throughout the delivery. That's a big part of it. Like you see that in almost all of these job descriptions, energy, being able to control the energy of the room is one of the things, one of the most important things that I teach my students in Workshop or Master. How do you keep that energy up when it's a three day, four day, five day workshop, when it's remote, when it, you know, when it, when none of the things are lining up in an ideal way? Honestly, one of the biggest differences between high paid facilitators and like normal day rate facilitators is their ability to keep that energy up. So I'm glad that's the first bullet point they put in there. Okay, let's look at what City is looking for. They're looking for a leadership program facilitator and trainer lead. That's kind of a tricky um, overview, but if you actually look at the job description, um, you'll see that it's very much into what facilitation is, especially this first one. Excellent facilitation skills are what they're looking for. The ability to facilitate complex discussions, which is really the core of what we do at AJ and Smart and what we teach at AJ and Smart. How do you bring a bunch of high level people together with lots of different big complex discussions and how can you guide them through that process in a way that gives them a result? Well, that's what they're looking for here. I and mean, that's exactly the type of thing that a facilitator will be doing. By the way, if you're watching this and if you're interested in actually becoming a facilitator that can do all of these foundational skills and can actually do every single one of the jobs I'm showing you, there's another video linked down below in the description, which will show you exactly how to do that. So it's an exact step-by-step -step system for becoming a high paid general facilitator that can run everything. It's a free video, the link is down below. Okay, let's get back to this video. Let's look at the next one. Spotify is looking for an agile coach. Now this might be something where you're like, well, Jonathan, an agile coach is not a facilitator. Well, you're wrong. A lot of people think that to be a facilitator, you need to be an agile coach or a scrum master, especially if you're going into a company that's very product focused, but that's not true. Agile coaching, scrum, these are elements, these are like almost like recipes and systems on top of the foundational aspects of collaboration and facilitation. So if you're learning the foundations, you can add agile coaching on top. You can add these things on top of what you already know. A lot of people in our community, they start off just learning facilitation, just learning collaboration techniques, and then they decide, okay, look, I want to work at Spotify and be an agile coach. Um, and they can learn that much more quickly because they understand the fundamentals. We also have the flip side. We have agile coaches joining our community. They now know this vertical of how to do collaboration for teams and pro product teams. And now they want to expand to be able to do strategy, leadership, brains to all of that kind of stuff. And so they learn the fundamentals so they can basically do everything. So agile coach is also a type of facilitator the way we look at it here at AJ and Smart. Uh, it's just a very specific type of facilitator for the product space. Another one, workshop facilitator. That's way more specific. That's for BOP industries. Casual. I don't know why it says casual. Workshop facilitators are very casual though. I'm, I'm not going to go into this. Uh, it just says, as a workshop communicator or a facilitator, you don't need to be a confident communicator. Communication skills are really one of the foundational elements of being a facilitator. How can you communicate in a way that helps people make decisions, solve problems, not feel intimidated, get the, the conversation flow going, and also con communicate in a way that you have authority without also kind of intimidating a group. It's, it's so complicated to get it right, but once you get it right, communication is one of these very difficult to compete with skills. Let's move on. Let's have, let's have a look over here. We've got human-centered design. Human-centered design uh, facilitator, you can really swap in and out design thinking facilitator here because human-centered design 
tactics and systems are basically taking design thinking and applying them. It's honestly, most of the time, they're exactly the same thing. And this is just why they put it in brackets here. So again, this is similar to earlier when I showed you the design thinking facilitator job. It's actually the same thing, so I'm not gonna go into it, but just to show you another little notification that you can set on LinkedIn when something like this comes up. It doesn't mean, hey, you just have to be focused on design, even though it says human-centered design. You can still learn the fundamentals of workshop design and facilitation and add on this design thinking aspect. That's one of the most important points here that facilitation and workshop design is a fundamental underlying skill, and then you can add things on top of it. Let's have a look at maybe two more. Innovation coach, you might not have thought about this one. This is some of the things that I do a lot of, innovation coaching at companies. Often it's teaching them the processes that these other companies want you to do for them. But basically what this team is looking for is underlying facilitation skills, with innovation as the focus topic, which means you're gonna be doing design thinking, lean canvas, business model canvas. These are all just recipes that you can learn. But again, the underlying skill is facilitation. Let's look at one last one here, collaboration coach. Actually, I love this name. And I think uh, Miro does a great job here of putting that name together. A collaboration coach is someone who helps a team collaborate. And as a facilitator, as a workshop, that's really your job. You're trying to make a team collaborate more efficiently, help them enjoy it more, help them get more results, help them solve problems, and help them do what they're actually being paid to do versus getting stuck up in the day-to-day -day of crappy meetings and how those systems work. So collaboration coach, in my opinion, this is something I've wanted to call um, what, we, what we do at AJ and Smart a lot, but it just didn't stick as well as workshop or facilitator. A collaboration coach is something you will start to see coming up more and more again in the future. So those are a couple of jobs, a couple of job titles, a couple of keywords that you can look for if you're looking for facilitation jobs at companies full-time or, or maybe freelance. And it's also just good to know what types of things you can be searching for and good to know that these companies are starting now to look for general purpose facilitators. Okay, so to summarize, what do all of these jobs have in common? And why could I personally do every single one of these jobs, even though they all have different job titles? Well, there's three things that they have in common. One is you need to be able to be comfortable with designing pretty much any type of workshop. So whether it's design thinking, business model canvas, custom strategy workshops, you just need to be able to pull together workshops really quickly and in a real improvised way. That's, that's the first thing. You need to be able to design any type of workshop and it shouldn't matter what sort of industry or whether it's design or strategy or business, you shouldn't, that shouldn't matter so much. It's just, you can design any type of workshop. Two, you need to be a good facilitator. So you need to be able to communicate well with the team, uh, help bring a team together, and you need to know the tactics to facilitate difficult situations. Whether that's just with team members or with leaders, it doesn't really matter. Working with groups can be quite complicated, but with the right facilitation skills, it's actually quite easy. Number three is really the underlying fundamental communication skills and presentation skills. If you're being asked to come into one of these companies and stand in front of a team, you have to be a good communicator. You have to be able to pick up on social cues. You have to be able to figure out when one person in the room is maybe not really engaged and you need to be able to communicate with them in a way that gets them engaged again. You saw this thing here multiple times when I was showing you these jobs, they're looking for someone who can keep the energy up in the room. So that, a lot of that is through uh, you know, your voice, through your body language, through your eye contact. There's so many things involved in presenting and public speaking and communication that are unbelievably important to being an excellent facilitator. So those are the three things that all of these jobs have in common. Now, if you've watched this far and you're interested personally in learning, how do I learn all those foundational skills? How do I get to the point where I can go to these companies and get a high rate? How can I also maybe just be a consultant and be doing these jobs at a high rate? If you're interested in any of that and you've gotten to this point of the video, I've recorded another one hour video approximately where I go into the detailed step-by-step -step process. I show you the 516 method for becoming a top 1% facilitator. In this video, I'll show you my journey from being a UX designer to a high paid facilitator, the types of workshops I do, how to get your day rate up, how to design any workshop for any team. This video is going to be a fantastic way to boost your career in facilitation. If you're interested, there's going to be a link down below uh, in the description to get to that video. It's 100% free. Watch it. I hope you enjoy it. 
And thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about facilitation. Goodbye, my friends.